recording now and welcome to the desert blockchain monthly session on may the 27th 2020 it's 7 p.m arizona time and tonight we're going to be featuring a an entity that is uh, moving to arizona making arizona its home which is zoro sign and we're fortunate to have shamsh hadi from who's the CEO of Zoro Sign and the co-founder who's joining us from Dubai. And you're creating some really cool services on uh, e-documents, e-signing, and using the uh, Hyperledger uh, blockchain and platform in order to create your services. So we're delighted to have you. We've got, uh, we'll have a few other folks joining us. And um, I would like to just introduce a few other uh, folks that are on the session. We have Professor Gary Marchant of a Arizona State University, Sandra Day O'Connor College of Law, uh, who hosts some incredible conferences. I, I highly recommend you keep it, your eye on some of the events that are going on there. And we have uh, Chad Islander, who uh, helps quite a bit with Desert Blockchain also was with CDS Pharmacy in their IT department. And uh, we have Jose, who's also an active member of um, the Desert Blockchain community and is with American Express. So, and we have other folks that are joining us via YouTube live stream. And if you're on the live stream, you're welcome to place some comments in the chat section, I am monitoring that and we will uh, add that into the conversation. So at this point, uh, well, let me tell you how I was introduced to Shamsh and Zorosign. The uh, Greater Phoenix Economic Council introduced us and Zorosign is gonna be moving their headquarters to Phoenix in Arizona. And you basically, uh, You've, you've been active, uh, you've looked all over the world and I'd love to hear a little bit about your reasons for uh, choosing Arizona and you know what, what attracted you here, Shamsh. And um, yeah, so I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. You can tell us about Zorosign and a little bit about what was the attraction to moving to Arizona. Great, thank you, Jay, uh, for the introduction and um, good evening to everyone there or hello to anyone around the world uh, who is listening in. I hope, uh, first of all, I hope you are all safe and keeping in good health. Uh, thank you so much for the time, uh, time today. And um, a quick brief about myself uh, before I get into a little bit about uh, Zorro sign. And yes, I do love questions. So please do, uh, uh, you, you know, please do ask and uh, I'd be happy to uh, answer those for you. Um, so as uh, Greater Phoenix Economic Council says, Phoenix is hot. And um, that's basically why I uh, decided to come there. And it's not hot weather-wise, uh, because where I am right now, Dubai is, is equally as hot. Um, but it definitely is a city that uh, I have seen in the US uh, is really, really on the exponential growth uh, platform. Um, you know, on the chart, getting off the charts, and uh, and I really, really uh, love the city in terms of when I was there, um, the the people, uh, the city itself, and more importantly, the blockchain community really uh, impressed me. I have not yet come across any city around the world that has um, shown such warmth, uh, such knowledge, and more importantly, um, the desire to learn and grow. And uh, I think that is one of the core principles I follow, um, that every day is a learning day. And if I don't learn something, uh, let me take it that uh, the, another way. If I, the day I stop learning is the day I consider I'm gonna die. So um, Phoenix keeps teaching me something every day and the people around there um, have really pushed me to do so. So I'm super excited. Uh, like uh, Jay said, our global headquarters will be in Phoenix uh, very shortly. Uh, hopefully this pandemic uh, opens up the friendly skies again and uh, the earlier it does so, the earlier it is uh, going to be our, our global headquarters. So I honestly, I, I, 
I um, plan that uh, it should be by the midsummer that Zoro signed and um, myself should have our doors open in Phoenix. Um, a little bit of background on myself. I am a uh, global traveler. I was born in California, but I have lived all over the world in Hong Kong, Singapore, parts of Canada, uh, parts of the US, and also sometime in the Middle East, in, only in Dubai. <coughs> uh, my passion has always been uh, technology. Uh, and the earliest days I can remember myself uh, being in this space is, uh, is I think just when I was under 10 years old, uh, when I decided to rip open a gift that I was given for Christmas, which was an IBM 286. I, I, didn't, I didn't want to turn it on. I didn't want to see what it looked like. I didn't want to see what Microsoft Windows looked like. I wanted to see the inside of it. And I, uh, and I remember we got the I, I got that desktop and the next morning, I didn't know how to put it back. And that just kept building up my curiosity of what is a computer and how do we get it working? Um, luckily, I had a very understanding dad, so I didn't get myself into trouble that day. Um, and I was able to, and he was able to replace it for me. And so then I decided not to start ripping things open, uh, but learn how to le uh, start learning things on the screen. Uh, so I truly believe that I was, uh, you know, I had that passion in me right from the get-go. Uh, ZoroSign was co-founded back in 2015 and um, as my third tech startup. And I, you know, building on that passion, I definitely saw some, you know, something out there that uh, we needed to change, we needed to improve, uh, we needed to build upon, and that was basically doing business online. Um, there were a lot of things that uh, the other co-founder and myself saw that we needed to address, uh, questions that the industry was not asking, uh, more specifically on the privacy, security, and validation aspect. And I'll go into that uh, very shortly in, uh, with our presentation and, and then a quick demo of ZoroSign. Um, but, uh, you know, with technology always changing. We wanted to also be ahead of the curve. That's something that I've always enjoyed doing uh, with all my startups. And uh, we found that uh, blockchain would definitely be the right technology or the platform to use. Um, as you may remember, back then, uh, Bitcoin was the only thing that was associated with blockchain for majority of the world's population. Uh, so at points in time, there is still a uh, a, a learning or a teaching aspect of our, uh, you know, when we're speaking or when we're demoing and things like that. But uh, I'm sure that uh, I won't have to get into uh, a 101 course here uh, with this group at least. Uh, so let me kick into the presentation uh, right away. And uh, Jay, since I'll be screen sharing, if there is any question, please just uh, feel free to stop me and uh, I will continue. Uh, I'll answer that question. So I hope you can all see my screen. Yeah, great. All right. Uh, so ZoroSign is basically in the business. Uh, we're into security, privacy in all your data and documents. And for us, it is everything related to trust. Uh, we are in existence because we have your trust. Um, our employees also have the trust that this is, uh, you know, an organization that is going to continue to grow and make sure that we provide that trust uh, in every life that we touch. So like I quickly uh, mentioned that there, we, we found there were three issues or three problems um, back in 2013 and then when the company was founded in 2015 that we really wanted to make an impact in, in every day's life for people doing business online. And that was user privacy, data and document security, and user verification and authentication. So the first one was uh, user privacy. Um, you know, and, and sorry, and that is basically what we felt was, um, you know, people are losing trust and we wanted to make sure that that trust was something that uh, we were able to capture back and uh, you know with with hacks with leaks and unfortunately with all those things that are sometimes 
in our not in our control as a user of a platform uh, we decided that everything has to be built on that trust uh, where everything that is there it be it your personal PII uh, your PHI or just just your username your password and your address or even just your signature privacy is is what matters and that's what we're focusing on uh, the second one is data and document security now this builds off of user privacy uh, you know your data is your data and your documents are your documents uh, so no back doors no ways of leaking uh, information uh, even the way that it is stored, it should be stored where, you know, it's unaccessible and only available to you. Uh, so, you know, for example, PKI infrastructure being used in other method methodologies of breaking down the hash, uh, you know, and securely storing it. Uh, we've also filed a patent uh, in our technology. So that is, you know, and using with the blockchain and the way that uh, uh, the data is stored and then uh, encrypted and decrypted. So that is in the process of uh, um, being patented as well. And hopefully that should uh, circle back around the end of the year. Um, and so, so again, the second aspect is data and document security. And finally, this is the aspect that I think most people in the world, even today are not focusing on is user verification and authentication. And this is not only in this space, but it's across the tech space. Uh, are we just verifying that a person is a person just with the username and password and the username just being an email address? Uh, are we advancing it with just an OTP that sometimes can be spoofed? What are those methodologies that we're proving to the world that when you're doing business, when you're transacting, when you're posting, when you're sharing day-to-day -day life events, is it, that, is it really you or is it a bot? Has your account been hacked? Um, and more importantly, are you the right person that is supposed to see those, uh, that information or have access to that information? So this, these are the three core fundamentals uh, the, that we focus on with uh, ZoroSign. So a little bit about us. Uh, we were founded in October of two, two 2015. Our product launched in November of 2017. Uh, so by the time we really rolled out was, uh, you can count as the January of 2018. Uh, so we, in, in about two years, two and a half years now, uh, we have over 40,000 paid using customers. Uh, these are in the individual customers uh, or accounts. And so then that's not the number of licenses. Uh, licenses vary from account to account. Um, but we have over 40,000 paid accounts uh, today. Uh, all over the world, most of it is in the U.S. and uh, all the way from mom pop to uh, government. And uh, we are now reached the level of uh, state governments. Uh, so uh, California was our first uh, state government, and we're rolling out. And hopefully, we'll see some action in uh, Arizona very soon. So, what is ZoroSign? It's uh, basically what we call a DBP, a digital business platform. Uh, it's a secure and encrypted one uh, where you can do your day-to-day -day work through it. Uh, we are a cloud-based solution and we have multiple deployment models. So you can use our REST APIs to integrate uh, into your platform that you use. Uh, you can also access or sign through a private and secure cloud that you control. And um, more importantly, if you need additional um, you know, security mechanisms and tools. And if you're running your own data center or uh, your own servers, we can have an on-prem solution as well. Uh, our public cloud service runs on AWS. Uh, so very easy to use. And a lot of people, most people that we've interacted with have had experience with AWS in the past as well. That does not, uh, that does not uh, limit us to running on other clouds, uh, Azure and others, uh, we have, also had instances done on uh, other cloud services around the world. Why blockchain? Um, you know, basically the four fundamentals of blockchain has really helped us push why it is, why the question should be why not blockchain? And, um, you, you know, and I think people are able to now really, really focus on and hone in on, uh, you know, the tools that blockchain um, 
has and the four principles that we use, those are the reasons why we should be focusing on transacting, trusting, and um, you know, using uh, solutions that run some sort of blockchain technology. We are built completely ground up on, on the blockchain technology. And like Jay mentioned, uh, we're using um, the Hyperledger fabric. Uh, so for us, that is something that is uh, that we're very comfortable with. Uh, we, we feel that this is also a platform where we're able to grow and we're able to help other companies grow uh, with the technology. And uh, one of the key features that uh, we're proud of is, is that um, as we're growing, they're growing and, you know, they don't need to keep coming back and replacing uh, their technology, updating their technology, because that is the heavy lifting that we continue to do uh, from our back end. And that's, uh, that's one of the promises that we have. Uh, so in terms of cost and in terms of training, in terms of, uh, you know, the, the headaches that sometimes the tech, the, the, the you know, uh, softwares give uh, individuals and corporations in the tech world of you know constantly upgrading and by the time you implement uh, within a couple of months uh, there's a new technology out there that always happens with cars by the time we buy a car then there's always a new car that's um, you know that comes out and we're you, you know I see that a lot and I always then ask myself that why couldn't I have just waited waited a couple of months and I could have had a better car um, so you know in that that for us that's something that's a promise that we we give on our end as well. Uh, there are five components of uh, ZoroSign. Uh, so the first being the digital signature. Uh, we feel that this is something that has uh, definitely changed uh, the, the world of when people are transacting online and signing documents and forms. Uh, it used to be the e-signature solution. Um, e-signature, as you know, is a 20-year-old technology uh, 21 years old and uh, to be precise and has not very uh, has not evolved and it's still basically just an image of your signature placed on a document with a, a disclaimer that it is your intent to sign uh, because the law allows you to sh have a representation of your signature not your real signature by the way and um, and and that's just how it is uh, so the laws have not advanced also in terms of technology. And, you know, as we know, uh, 20 years is a, is a very, very long time in the tech world for things not to evolve. Uh, so we decided to go with digital signature uh, using PKI infrastructure uh, and additional methodologies as well to really keep, hone in and focus in on verifying, validating the user, their signature, and basically putting that real wet ink signature on a document using digital signature. And this is, this is now what people are asking for, looking for, and laws, uh, we are, as we are seeing now, are also pushing towards digital signatures rather than e-signatures. Uh, the second component is uh, ZoroScience Forensics Token. That is the aspect that we have, uh, uh, we, we have patented. Uh, this is basically like your, uh, like a wax seal that you had in, in the past, our forefathers had used when transacting and sending envelopes um, around, around the world. And um, so our, uh, basically our token, our digital wax seal uh, captures all the documents DNA as we like to call it. So it's the user's information, um, the document, the attachments, Sarbanes-Oxley audit trail, the chain of custody, all of that is captured into uh, this token, and only if, if you are, have been a participant of that workflow or you request to have access to it, that's when you will be able to verify the transaction, validate the document and the users. Um, and, uh, you, you know, and basically, this is the control mechanism that uh, you would want to have, is in our opinion, uh, when you are viewing and when you're accessing. And this is both on paper-based and printed versions of the, the documents. Uh, we don't like the paper-based because uh, we are a paperless company, uh, but obviously you know, there are businesses that still rely on that. And hopefully with our third component, we are able to help companies go completely paperless. So that's basically our workflow automation engine. Uh, so this is what we decided to implement with there to help 
move those manual based processes or semi manual based processes to completely digital. Uh, we have put our foot in our own mouth and uh, and we decided that uh, all our four offices, uh, so we have uh, our global headquarters now in Phoenix, we have an office in Dubai and an office in India and in Sri Lanka at uh, currently with a couple more offices that are planned to open uh, later this year, um, which had to be postponed due to the pandemic. Um, but we, none of our offices have a printer. Uh, we don't use paper. Uh, that means we don't have filing cabinets, no soft costs as well uh, in terms of pens, staplers, uh, hole punch, anything like that. Uh, we've been able to even bring down uh, insurance costs of, across the board on all our offices uh, for fire and flood uh, because we basically have limited amount of things now that need to be insured, uh, which is basically the paper. Our document management system is the fourth component, and that is basically um, you know, when we're moving into this tech world, uh, this, sorry, this uh, paperless world, everything being on the cloud, um, it is a, a pain to have multiple logins. It is a pain to know where everything is stored, remember passwords, and, uh, um, and because we definitely don't recommend you using the same password across the board uh, with all your accounts online. Uh, and also to have a place where we can retrieve the documents that are all stored on the blockchain we've included a document management system we have however linked all the popular cloud services as well because we know that uh, people don't always like to change everything that they're doing so uh, drive a uh, google drive one microsoft's OneDrive, uh, apple's icloud um, dropbox box uh, we're all connected so you can just easily log in to any one of your accounts there and then have the documents either upload them from there or download them to uh, you know to the right location uh, for your easy filing and access and finally zoro fill was uh, it's in the beta stage still and uh, but uh, it, it's the the newest member of our platform uh, it's using ai and ml to auto efill forms uh, this was um, an idea that came in with one of my own personal pet peeves because I barely use a pen and, uh, and paper now that we don't have it in our office as well. Um, so I think I've forgotten how to read my own writing and, uh, and we definitely always get forms and documents to fill out. Um, so we decided to help me and others around the world as well to um, stop learning how to read our own writing again and uh, basically have everything online. So with a click of a button, everything gets filled out and we make sure that uh, nothing is left out. And then uh, you can just uh, continue on uh, your day-to-day -day work. So that painful process of writing pages, uh, even a page now uh, is all gone with just a click of a button of a mouse. So how does OroSign work? It's basically three steps. Either you upload your document or you build it out, uh, the template out in ZoroSign. Uh, it, we do the lifting of uh, sending it over and making sure that it goes to the right people at the right time. Uh, we also help with the reminding them, making sure that they don't miss due dates. And then you can track it and monitor the process of where the signatures or where the documents are or forms are in terms of where it's supposed to be filled once it's done we secure it and then uh, you always will have access to verifying and authenticating both yourselves if you are part of the workflow or if you um, if people come in contact with it uh, so let me give you a quick example of what i mean by verifying and authenticate so if there's two parties that are part of a for example a sales and purchase agreement uh, you know and if there is a discrepancy and it goes to court uh, basically what we're saying here is, and, and it is definitely being used this way, is the, the, the courts are no longer using whatever testimony that is provided in terms of the contract, either physically printed out and shared with them. They are now just ask, asking the courts to validate uh, the contract that was executed by scanning that um, our secure token 
uh, which is only read through our mobile apps that are available on the Apple iOS store and the Google Android store. And then they on their own devices have access to the final document. They are able to see if there were any modifications, revisions, um, you know, if the contracts had expiry dates, uh, you know, or terminate if, you know, if they were canceled, revised, revoked, all of that they can see uh, by accessing the document, its workflows, uh, the audit trail, the chain of custody that is all secured on the blockchain. Uh, so obviously, it, you know, there's no question about uh, tampering, uh, you know, with the immu immutability and uh, obviously, uh, you, you know, the other benefits of having it on the blockchain. Sorry. Uh, industries that have already started using Zorosign, uh, education, financial services, government, healthcare, insurance, legal, real estate, and home inspection. Uh, there are more, but these are the popular ones that have uh, picked, a, you know, picked up uh, Zorosign right away, and we've made some sort of dent in these industries. Departments that within these industries that specifically are using Zorosign, procurement, accounting and tax, finance, HR, legal, marketing, and sales. And then examples of documents here, I'm not gonna read through all of them, but uh, as you can see, there's a whole wide variety of them. Uh, and, and obviously you have the deck as well. So you can see um, you know, the type of documents that are used. Again, these are just uh, a, a list of a few documents, obviously every business, every uh, organization, every workflow uh, may be different. And this is the last uh, part of ZoroSign. This is not our CSR policy. This is actually part of our DNA uh, where we want to save the planet. Uh, and so what ZoroSign did was right at the beginning, we calculated how many pages uh, it takes to save a medium sized tree. And we, uh, with our research, we, we found that it's uh, 8,000 pages. So we partnered up with an organization uh, based out of California. And so every 8,000 pages you or your organization transacts, uh, we plant a tree. Uh, so you start off with a empty tree and while you build it out, uh, while you start filling out and use, uh, transacting 8,000 pages, we've gamified it just to make it uh, exciting and challenge, to challenge you. And once the tree looks pretty like this, uh, we contact you and then we uh, ask you to share with us uh, through that organization where you would like to plant the tree and there's options to plant it globally. And then we maintain that tree for life and then you're able to track that tree uh, as and when and how frequent you want to do so. Uh, so that's just some, some aspect of giving back. Uh, we're already speaking to the state of Arizona and city of Phoenix to start, um, you know, making sure that uh, you know, we promote uh, planting those trees in Phoenix, uh, but again, that is the ultimate decision of the customer. Um, but if there is uh, if there is no uh, decision taken in a specific geographic location anywhere in the world, um, then we will plant that tree in Phoenix. Over the past couple of years, we have uh, participated in the million million tree challenge for the California wildfires. Uh, but now that uh, Phoenix is our home. I uh, will try and make an impact uh, there as well. So that is a quick uh, overview of uh, ZoroSign. And um, so the question we ask individuals when we speak to them now is, is that uh, uh, you know, technologies that we've been used to and we've been trusting since the 20th century, uh, now that we are in the 21st century, are you sure that they have grown? Are you sure that they have evolved and pivoted in areas that are, that matter to you more? So the direct question that we ask is, are you 100% sure that your data and documents are secure? I think you can all agree with me that there are companies out there that uh, sometimes even say that they are secure, that they say that they have the encryptions, um, no need to call out names, um, but especially in the conferencing world, uh, we've just recently seen that. And um, you know, unfortunately that those, those examples are unfortunate. Uh, but, uh, you know, we are one of those countries, uh, companies that definitely uh, focus on that and we can prove that if that is 
anything that uh, requires that uh, proof. Now I will uh, share my screen of, uh, of our platform that we, are, we have or we're using. So I can quickly uh, show you a quick demo of ZoroSign. Um, this is our, our website. As you can see, we are, uh, you know, we're offering businesses that are going through, um, you know, re working from home. Uh, you know, I think now everybody has, you know, gotten used to working from home. But if you would like to uh, sign up for our free trial uh, during uh, this this pandemic, uh, we opened up three month uh, free trial, and which ends on June thirtieth. So from the date that you sign up. And for three months on, you have unlimited documents to send out uh, through our platform. And it's as easy as just uh, signing up. Um, but this is our website. Um, you can learn a lot of more about us, who we are, what we do. And um, this is our login page. I talked about user val val validation and verification. We still have the old school method of username and password. Uh, but last November, we launched our password list login. Uh, you, if you have our mobile app downloaded, uh, you can log in securely and safely through our um, through our mobile app on our website and on our mobile app. And that is additional verification validation that it is you using multi-factor authentication. So once you've signed in, um, right away you come into our dashboard and uh, our way of communicating with our customers is through these uh, pop-ups, which you can obviously hide if you don't want to see it. But this, you know, we are very cognizant of the fact that we all get hundreds of emails a day, uh, some or most that we don't really want to read and filter out. Uh, so we don't communicate with you unless necessary. Uh, so we always use um, these pop-ups, like I mentioned, and anytime something new comes up, we will always let you know and we'll always have a video of how it is, uh, how we recommend it to be used. Uh, so in this case, we've recently redone our workflow builder and we've had a feature where customized, customizable emails are also be, you're able to send those through our platform. Uh, so you can always go to our YouTube channel or click here to see the video. And then there is also another area that we use for our what's new area. So new features that uh, we have here. So as you can see, this, the workflow builder has been it's quite recent. We have our Zorosign digital certificate, um, our enhancements here into our blockchain audit trail, uh, password protected files, and so forth. So this is an area, again, uh, I have clicked to not to show again, because uh, I log into Zorosign very frequently. So I, I would not want to keep clicking on uh, the X button here, but uh, you can always turn that on and off. Our dashboard is where all the action takes place. Your inbox is basically where you would um, see everything just like on your email client. Uh, if you have documents or forms that you would like to fill or process or that need your attention are in here, or if a document or form is completed, uh, you will be able to view it from here. In process, basically, is is a, is a uh, workflow that you have completed your step in, but that still has few other people to uh, participate in. So these are, for example, document sets, NDAs, third party agreements, uh, you know, employee handbooks, things like that. You can always go in to see more details, uh, the date it started, what step it's in, who's the originator, who is it with, and things like that. These are, this is the completed basket, uh, you know, where you can see things that are completed. Uh, so you can obviously see, you know, different agreements, testing, NDAs, quotes, uh, you know, employee documents, things like that, that's all there. Uh, and you can go so and so on, you can search as well. Uh, you will also see documents that are been shared with you or if people have scanned the token and have requested access, you can also look at that there. Then rejected is what um, you know what it's implying. Anything that has been rejected, uh, if it is in, you know, all those things are um, 
all those uh, documents or forms will be listed out here. So for example, an invoice was rejected back in July, 2019. You always have a reason why you have to put in that is there. Um, then you can also see your expired documents or documents that have been canceled. On the top right, you can see our profile uh, where you can edit your profile, your business profile. Uh, I'm an admin, so I have additional uh, areas here so I can edit the company seal. Um, we are connected to Clio and many other solutions. Um, Clio is in the legal space and um, uh, and then you can change your password and then see the usage summary for um, for yourself here. Also, how many licenses that are available. I talked about the save a tree, plant a tree program that is part of our core part. So my account, this account of mine, uh, we've transacted 846 pages. As you can see, I'm a long ways away to that 8,000, but my tree is starting to fill up and the grass around me is starting to get green. Um, and then I can also see right away what my impact is with those 846 pages. I've saved about 0.11% of a tree. This is how many pounds of wood or kilos of wood that I've saved currently, how much water in gallons I've saved, how much time I've saved, uh, how many tons of CO2 I have avoided, and approximately how much uh, cost savings I've had uh, as of transacting these 846 pages. On the left side is where all our features are. Uh, so this is our start button, this is our desktop, uh, this is our document management system uh, where, where you can access your draft documents and templates, your address book. This is where you can view all your users. You can add contacts, add groups. You can import uh, from Active Directory, Outlook, Gmail, and other uh, areas. This is Zorofill in its beta stage. Uh, this is where you manage your licenses. And then admin is where Another area that um, people love to see and try to get to understand how they can help their businesses grow. Uh, so you can add departments and um, to to give uh, to assign to the users within your organization. You can assign them roles. So what role they play in your organization. Uh, this is where you manage your users as an admin. So the, where you can add users, you can add which department they're in, what role they'll have who are your active users, who are your inactive users. And uh, from your active users, you can also lock them out if they um, you know, are on holiday or, you, or they, sometimes they lock themselves out if they forget their passwords. Uh, or if they no longer work for the company, you can also uh, lock them out. And once they become inactive, then you can also deactivate their license and assign it to someone else if you need to. Uh, company seal is that that is uh, obviously if you need to apply that and then you have analytics. So this is uh, basically your summaries for your organization. Uh, how many documents have been sent? How many are in the inbox of all the employee organizations? Um, the organization's employees, how many are in process, completed and so forth? And then your licenses as well. And then uh, finally, there are other settings that we have here. Um, so if you have a company font and the size that you use, uh, so then it can be managed here. Obviously, it can also be modified uh, while it is in, you know, while you are uh, seeing a document. And then we also have partnered uh, for additional verification for a knowledge-based authentication with uh, LexisNexis. So, that is a premium feature that uh, one would have to contact the sales rep or contact sales at zorosign.com to get more details. Our forensics tokens, this is where everything is housed and all the action is here. So if you have shared a document, you can decide to share um, you know, a proposal or whatever it is, and you can dec and decide who to share it with, give them access. You can open the document from here, you can remove the sharing feature, you can also time it here. And then if someone has scanned a token that you have been part of, uh, you can see that here and then you can see what is the status. So for example, I rejected this person and these are pending uh, with me. 
uh, to give them either grant them access, accepted or reject that permission. And then you can always see our terms and conditions privacy policy. If there's a problem you're having, you can report it or contact us. Uh, our, you know, I talked about our workflow automation. So that's where all the action happens here with the start button where you can send out a document to eSign. Uh, you can send bulk send documents. And this is this was a feature that uh, our um, our education customers asked for, uh, which we turned around and built very quickly, uh, where they wanted to send out a form where all their employees had to sign uh, immediately for training that they had gotten. A quick sign is, um, you can also quick sign a document, which is just send over a document uh, with no participation or actions given to the other parties. Um, and then you can also create templates. So an e-sign is basically where you would have two or more people participating in a workflow. Bulk sign, like I mentioned, is you don't have to send out, say, 300 documents, three, you, you know, each and every one. You can send out one document to 300 people with just one click of a button. And a quick sign is, like I mentioned, a one-way traffic. Uh, so, for example, like a memo or something where you just want uh, an update to be given to the other party where they don't have to fill out any information or sign anything. Uh, we have an area where you can create and then select templates. Uh, this is how we make your life easier and we save you a lot of time, which effectively also then saves money. Uh, so we have five different uh, templates that we allow you to create. Uh, so a document specific template is basically where the same document is used and the users or participants change from each workflow or each envelope uh, from time to time. Uh, so an example of this would be for um, a leave request or, uh, you know, that's the one that comes to the top of my mind where each employee, uh, you know, it doesn't matter of which employee it is, it is the same leave request template. It's the same set of people that are approving um, in the back end, be it uh, HR, finance, and you know, direct line managers, uh, but the employees would change from request to request. A user specific template is where the same set of people uh, would be part of the transaction. However, the document changes on the frequency. So, an example of this would be, um, for example, your financial statements on a month to month basis, your balance sheet, your trial balance. And your cash flow changes on a month-to-month -month basis, but it's still the same people that need to sign uh, those documents. Another example would be utility bills or petty cash, uh, so reimbursements. Uh, your on a monthly basis or how free, however frequently you 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 have your processes, uh, but the same people would be approving it and reimbursing your employees or yourselves. Uh, but it is the individuals, uh, it is the document that changes, but the individuals stay the same. Uh, dynamic is basically a hybrid of both the document specific and user specific, where you can make modifications to the document or to the people that are, are part of this. This is uh, especially used in our um, financial services space, uh, because if there are forms on their websites or in their portals that their customers use that are powered by ZoroSign, you know, if there is a, uh, a car loan or student loan that is above the norm, but is still being accommodated by the bank or the credit union, um, then if you need an additional manager that needs to sign it, get additional approval, uh, then if you build out a dynamic workflow, then you can add that extra la la level of, uh, uh, or layer of approval by adding in someone else. Uh, bulk send, like I mentioned earlier, uh, you can create this template and then send it out to specific groups that you have formed in your address book or individuals across your organization, or it could even be your customers on a year-to-year -year basis if you need them to update their know your customer or KYC or, or any updated forms that need to be provided. And then we also work in the um, uh, architecture space, in the consulting space where uh, any AutoCAD or DWF drawings that are uh, needed to be approved. And this is coming through most of our 
uh, sorry, some of our government entities or customers that we have that are using our platform uh, from the approvals, the permitting departments are using our technology to get their processes uh, approved and save time and uh, get those uh, approvals out for people to start building and growing their cities and their countries. So that is a very quick uh, update uh, and then uh, a quick look into ZoroSign. Uh, if there's any other information that you would like, uh, please contact us at uh, info at zorosign.com. Uh, the Desert Blockchain community is always uh, free to contact me directly and I'll have someone uh, connect, connected to you uh, right away. And um, yeah, if there's any questions, I'm happy to ask at that time. Great, thank you, Sean. That's very impressive how uh, thorough and comprehensive the service is. And it's exciting to have you in Phoenix and Arizona, coming to Phoenix and Arizona. And <clears throat> the, you know, one question I would ask you, and then we'll open it up to others. And if you might be on mute, I've unmuted most people, but if you yeah. muted yourself, then you might have to unmute yourself. But um, I'd love to hear what you would like to see from the Arizona innovation community and, you know, what, how could uh, Desert Blockchain and the, the tech community and legal community and academic community and enterprise community uh, collaborate with ZoroSign? So. Yeah, great. Uh, thank you so much for asking that question. Um, so, you know, first of all, ZoroSign is not just a business that is, wants to park its global headquarters there in um, Phoenix. Uh, wherever we've gone, we've always left an imprint. Uh, we've always wanted to be part of the community at large and uh, grow. Uh, so, for example, with the Education Committee, we, you know, we are, uh, you know, working with Grand Canyon University and have been in discussions with the ASU Skysong uh, to basically build out blockchain, be part of R&D, um, you know, work with um, the blockchain lab, uh, you know, out of ASU and others and, um, you know, work on improving what we have, uh, what not only on our platform, but in the blockchain space, uh, the security, the privacy. So we would like to grow and along with with the, our potential partners with the desert blockchain community as well, we, we would like to make an impact, a positive impact in the blockchain space as well. You know, in the legal space, we want to continue to work with, um, you know, that in that industry in Arizona, we want to help with, you know, improving the laws that are in place, uh, both from the state and federally, uh, you know, so we are working with, uh, in, in Washington to get uh, the right language put in. Uh, we're trying to work with, uh, you know, uh, the House, the Senate and, and others to really make sure that uh, there is a better understanding uh, and putting the U.S. ahead of, you know, ahead in the world in, in leading the way, in paving the way for privacy, security and using technology and advancements to our benefit in a positive way. Uh, so, for example, we were recently approved as an e-notary, uh, as, as a, a solution that's part of the e-notary uh, approvals in the state of Arizona. So Secretary Katie Hobbs' uh, office approved us. So if there is a, uh, you know, a document that is uh, now signed through ZoroSign um, in the, with a, a notary uh, part of the workflow, then those are going to be accepted in the court of uh, Arizona. And we are now working with two uh, remote notaries out of uh, Arizona to power their technology using ZoroSign. So we are, again, pushing forward uh, in that space. Uh, with the community at large, uh, we would love to, you know, partner with, um, you know, different organizations, regardless of the vertical to, obviously, if there's a way that ZoroSign can help improve their platforms, their technologies, uh, you know, we would love to grow with them. Uh, but more importantly, uh, you know, it's, it's not always about the money, uh, but to really use our, you, you know, what we've learned uh, as thought leaders 
I, you know, as the experience that we have as well, we'd like to build and grow that and share that uh, with the community as well. So we definitely want to be integrated and part of um, the ecosystem. And like I said, I've felt um, the community, uh, the blockchain community specifically in Phoenix, uh, be the most open and loving community that I have come across uh, and in all my international travels. And I would love to continue to um, once I'm physically there to really be part of that and, uh, you, you know, and be with, uh, with all of you guys and learn and grow with everyone. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. And other questions. <clears throat> and if, if you're watching this on the live stream, you can type your questions into the chat. I'm monitoring that. So. Uh, Sean, Jose Tafla here. Uh, okay. First, I hope you have a good aid. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. Um, if you're talking about compliance, there is uh, GDPR, there is CCPA, there is data retention, etc. How do you handle uh, purging of data per those uh, regulations? So that's a great question. So if uh, we go to our trust page, um, happy to show that very quickly and. Uh, that is where we show our compliance for uh, for Zorosign. Uh, so we're not uh, so we're definitely compliant with. Uh, um, let me quickly pull it up. Uh, we're definitely compliant with GDPR. Uh, we did that before we could uh, uh, reach there. So eSign Act, UETA, GDPR, HIPAA, ISA 3402, SOC 2, uh, Type 2, uh, ISO. Um, we, we meet all the compliances, CCPA. Uh, we're also in compliance with the ADA and uh, WCAG 2.1 as well. Uh, so this is obviously important to us. These are uh, very, very, uh, you know, these are the questions our company, uh, the companies or our customers ask us. So even specifically from, uh, you know, our Canadian customers, our Indian customers, and that list keeps growing. Uh, but we are compliant. We make sure that we're uh, we're trying to make sure we're ahead of the curve there because we definitely uh, want our uh, our customers and ourselves to be in compliance at all time because they're trusting us more importantly. Um, but we are also have to gain their trust by making sure we're compliant with their own country uh, laws and regulations. But most importantly, as well as uh, if we're maintaining this then even from a privacy security and um, encryption standpoint we're making sure that we are providing the latest and greatest to our customers yeah. does that answer your question jose absolutely yes that's something that bit me in the behind so many years ago and i don't want to go over that again <laughs> that's what i asked <laughs> great other questions So I'm always around, like I mentioned, uh, to the Desert Blockchain community. Uh, you can always reach out to me directly. Uh, and if there's anything else, then Zorosan is, uh, uh, it's very easy to get hold of us uh, through our website as well. Great. All right, well, that's awesome. And we definitely welcome Zorosan into the Arizona community, the tech community, the innovation community, enterprise community. And I'm delighted that we had a opportunity to you know meet you find out about Zora sign and um, you know introduce you to some of the what I consider the key members of the community here so so we'll go ahead and wrap it up for this evening and our next month we will have Tupelo uh, presenting on their uh, decentralized platform that's like blockchain without blockchain and uh, David uh, Fry will be joining us along with some other members of the Tupelo community. And uh, if you have a suggestion for upcoming topics or sessions, please let me know. We're, we have these sessions on the fourth Wednesday of the month uh, at 7 p.m. And we are also experimenting with some technical workshops and so forth that's uh, to a smaller um, 
subset of the desert blockchain community. And if you're interested in that, please let me know. Uh, right now we're meeting on Thursday evenings and Saturday afternoons, and, but it, that is kind of the technical side of things. So thank you everyone for attending and Shams, thank you for um, joining us from Dubai. And we are excited to be, um, to welcome you to, to Arizona and we're looking forward to further collaboration. So thank you so much. I'm very excited. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Take care everyone. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye bye. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you.